Hello guys and uh, welcome back to another part in my analog DIY synthesizer tutorial stroke, you know, yeah, series. Um, today what I'm going to quickly do is quickly in this video show you just sort of how far I'm getting with the um, the sort of separate module PCBs for the Advantage 03 sort of complete uh, synthesizer system. So this is basically what we have here is a bare PCB board which I showed you in the last um, sort of video. Please exclude, excuse, me, excuse the glare from the camera. As you can see that that's the bare PCB board. Sorry about the focus on that. I'm not going to use a tripod because I need to move around quite a bit to show you different bits and pieces. It's just going to be too much hassle and pretty much missed the point of the video. And as we can see here this is a this is an envelope. If we look closely this is the envelope section. There's a few things that need amending on some of the boards here. There's a few mistakes but not massively functional, you know, massive functionality mistakes. Just things that should have been added but you can kind of get by by sort of bodging wires or jumping resistors across by the, via the back side as I've done on a couple of boards. Over here we have the VCO. This is the VCO board. I've kind of glued it down because I'm doing a uh, doing a bit of a stability test on it and here we have the is basically this VCO board is complete we have uh, the sub oscillator section here this is a sub oscillator stroke the um, sink out I think or sink in but it basically it's a complete VCO so we can have the sink in sink out we can have a sub oscillator on it on the actually advantage 03 there's only a sub oscillator on VCO3 so you don't have to have this on all boards I won't necessarily populate those um, particular components here we have the tune if you look at these there's a reason why these are this way for instance with uh, some synthesizers like things like the Moog the Mini Moog where you have the tuning pots on the back this is to give you that access so you can put a small screwdriver inside a little hole and adjust we have um, initial tune so this sets the key you want to say for instance you press A4 you can tune this it's almost like a coarse tune but this is the initial internal coarse tune you turn that till you get to so uh, 440 Hertz and then you can sort of the next one along we have our high frequency tracking so we can adjust sort of the high frequency and then we have our one volt per octave of the in other words our VCO width and here we have under here is a Tempco resistor, a one kilo ohm Tempco resistor, and we have the LS318 dual NPN transistor, which gives us our voltage to current conversion for exponential conversion. Uh, we have I tried this with these with um, two TL074s first of all, and it was doing a, quite a bit of drifting. So I've put the, um, it's only temporary at the moment anyway, you can experiment with, uh, this is the whole idea why we have, you know, look here, we've got IC sockets, we've got 2132s, I think they are, OPA 2132s, we have an LF347 quad uh, quad op amp instead of the normal TL074, it's just a slightly bit better spec, not massively, but a bit better spec, so I'm just trying to, you know, again, experiment with parts to see which gives the best stability. We can also hear this is the actual timing cap for the oscillator, uh, which is a one nanofarad. This is a silver mica cap. You can also use polystyrene, which I heard is maybe better. Um, polystyrene or silver mica, as long as it's a very sort of like um, stable dielectric inside of the capacitor, doesn't really matter. Even for experiment's sake, I could have just gone with a normal sort of you know, sort of cheap ceramic or mylar capacitor. I'm um, just trying to think what this trimmer is up the top. I've completely forgotten. I think this is our pitch bend. So we, we have, when we have our send, up, we can have MIDI pitch bend in. There is a possibility. I may not necessarily do it on this version. Uh, so you can trim the actual pitch bend amount per oscillator. And we have all our decoupling. If you can see these very small, one oh, uh, these are 100 nanofarad capacitors. Not that one there. This is a decoupling capacitor, but this is not for the uh, actual um, power supplies to the ICs. These just as act as power reservoirs, so we don't get any voltage spikes. It just helps with stability. And then we have our main sort of decoupling, which are the ten. If you see the brown caps on the side, which are the ten microfarad capacitors. 
and there we have a four CD4040. This is a decade counter, I think it is, divider, which does the sub oscillator. I've tested that. That works. I had a little bit of an error with that where basically I was driving it from the triangle wave and it wasn't quite working. Um, I actually hadn't actually realized I did actually change the circuit on the breadboard to a um, to drive it from the sawtooth via a resistor and it's working plus plus um, minus one octave and uh, minus two octaves as well. There's a couple of bits here which are not populated yet which to do with things like the FM feedback where you can have an FM feedback loop on on the on oscillator. You can either have that option to have it or not have it. Again, same thing with the sync in, sync out. So it depends on which way you would want to do it really. Uh, let's have another look at another board. So yeah, let's just have a quick if I can find one. That's our bare oscillator board versus our populated oscillator board. I've got that running at the moment. I'm just doing a bit of a, a temperature test on that one. Uh, here we have uh, pulse width modulation LFOs as you can see. So basically again we can see the decoupling. All the ICs, all the, all the chips have been socketed so if we get any problems you can easily pull them out or if you want to chuck a cheap one in before using a more precision one just to make sure you get it running before you burn it out by accident you can sort of yeah that sort of helps any uncostly accidents let you have another bite of the cherry as they say um, and this is the timing caps for the uh, uh, pulse width modulation each, each LFO has got, um, sorry each oscillator has an independent pulse width modulation and we have a vibrato one so it's a, basically yeah we have four LFOs on this board quite simple actually as you can see the ins and outs I've just tried it so the guy who actually converted the PC uh, the schematics to the PCB design really really did a very very nice job so thanks again Mike for these very nice silk screen as we can see the back this is one of my very first sort of um big soldering projects I was a little bit mm, because I'm not the best solderer, something I haven't done for a long time. I've had a little few goes at repairing a few bits and pieces, but nothing on this kind of scale. I'm sort of really getting the hang of it now. And what we have... Sorry about the jogging about of the camera. What we have here is the SEM type filter. As we can see, that's our OTA, CLM. 13700. We have a quad op amp here with this us buffering from the low pass, and we can see we have we can't probably can't see that from. So we have the low pass. I've basically just put some wires across it. So I've, I've, I've been able to test them so far. But everything works. There's been no nothing's fried. There's been a few kind of little tiny minor errors here and there, but that can be tidied up. It's not a big deal. But for a first, you know, for a first go at it, I think it's it's coming along really really well. Just focus in there. As we got the two, we have two trimmers here, which does the voltage offset. I can't remember what that first one is. Uh, the first op amp, as you can see there. I'm not sure why this was. I think this was supposed to be. Yeah, that's right. I I I, I rushed this a little bit. Ended up putting a capacitor here, and realised it was supposed to be a resistor and a negative feedback loop. Hence why this one's kind of lying down, feeling a bit sorry for itself, but it still works, it's all good. So very pleased with that and it sounds very, very nice. And I can I can kind of notice a difference in the, the amount the amount of signal to noise ratio already. And I've tried there we have a demodulation input. I've tried modulating it with an envelope. Again, it's working as as sort of per circuit as expected. I mean I've spent enough time on these breadboards to uh, sort of know the circuits inside out to be to be honest with you. And here we have the um, let's try and get focus back again. Here we have the envelope generator. Again that's the sockets. I haven't put the decoupling capacitors on yet. I haven't finished one. I was trying this one out yesterday. Sort of gave up, got caught up doing other bits and pieces. Um, 
and we'll have to wire this one up and test it and I'll probably try and lash up a test um, LED just to sort of check the modulation or try it on the scope or try modulating another module I've tried I've tried feeding the VCO into the filter it sounds really nice really good a little bit overdriven but I'll have to balance the outputs um, what else do we have made up and we also have the this is look like the all the five and the boards I have so far this is the main LFO where we have the triangle a pulse wave sine wave uh, random stroke sample and hold and a ramp wave which we can invert all um, waveforms so I just need to make up a noise generator and try and test the uh, random stroke sample and hold waveform I'm definitely not getting a clock into this but I couldn't completely test it and just have a have a look at this so, um, N channel field effect transistor which is part of that sample and hold circuit and we just have a couple of uh, quad out op amps on the first one where we have the comparator square wave integrator which is the first part of it there's tri the triangle wave integrator and the square wave the comparator side um, I've you decided to use a low powered op amp hence I've gone for I do apologise about the focus there guys I've decided to go for the LM324 which is a lower power than using a TL072 but the rest of it I tried it on this side and it didn't the sample and hold doesn't work on the breadboard so I swapped it back to the TL074 so something else to note there in case you're wondering why from the schematic the there's one TL074 and one LM324 specifically well, may need a little bit more experimentation so yeah so there we have it we can see all the necessary decoupling there and again I've added some um, power leads to that rather than trying to solder them and they will actually be, be replaced by proper um, sort of male to female header sockets so we can sort of cross connect between the boards and we've put this little thing on this when they actually sit down inside the unit that's the whole idea in any configuration I decide obviously these will be facing towards the back so we can get a you can get a little screwdriver in to tune them up and yeah and that's about it for now I'll be doing another video very 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 shortly just to uh, run you through a few uh, through a few tests so we can see this bad boy in action anyway thank you for watching this and I do apologize about the camera being a little bit dodgy today and out of focus and uh, yeah just trying to get around and show you what's been going on this week I only received this Saturday and uh, yeah making really good progress guys and thank you guys for all your support please give me a like a uh, thumbs up or if you've got any advice out there please drop it in the comments box yeah catch you all very soon take it nice and easy people